Hello, I'm Don Pierce from the North Bay Science Discovery Day, an independent outreach from the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in Novato. Today we have a special treat. We have with us Ella, Jordan, Evelyn, and Hazel, and we're at Kaiser Emergency Services where we're going to meet with Dr. Jonathan Villanos. Jonathan is the Assistant Chief of the Department of Emergency Services. Jonathan? Thank you for having us. Thank you, Dr. Pierce. Welcome, kids. Thank you so much for taking time to be here today. Over the past year, we've taken care of lots of patients with COVID-19 in the hospital. Most people aren't very sick, but some people are and have to be admitted for further treatment. You may even know some people that have become sick or had COVID-19. This can be really stressful, and I hope anyone that you know has recovered. This virus, as you probably know, is all around the world, which is why we call it a pandemic. It's kind of a tricky virus because it spreads really easily, and many people actually don't get very sick, but can spread it to others without knowing. Some people, a small number, do get pretty sick from COVID-19 when the virus attacks their lungs and causes pneumonia. The virus can also cause clots in our blood, which prevents the blood from flowing correctly to different organs that keeps our heart and brain healthy. When a patient checks into the emergency department, one of the first things that we do is check their vital signs, temperature, pulse, blood pressure, the breathing rate, and something called the oxygen saturation. Measuring those vital signs tells us a lot about how sick the patient might be or not sick. I asked one of our nurses, Doug, to come help us show how we get the vital signs. Doug? Great. Hello, I'm Doug, one of the nurses here. Um, I could use some volunteers. Jordan, do you mind being a patient? Okay. Thank you. Why don't you come up and, and get on the gurney here. And how about Ella? Could you uh, help me out too? Okay. We're going to get some vital signs. So you can go ahead and uh, we're going to get a temperature. This is, uh, we, we typically, you know, you got to take the mask off for that. So you can just kind of pretend to do that. So you go ahead and you put a little cover on there. And if you could get a temperature, you can just kind of pretend to get a temperature. You can hold that. There you go. You're going to go right up. We'll just pretend to get a temperature. So that's pretty important. So if you would go underneath his tongue, we won't do that now because of masks and stuff. So we're going to do a temperature. Thank you very much. And then we're going to do a blood pressure. And so this blood pressure cuff, we're going to wrap this around his arm. And so you can kind of put it right there. Can you help me here? Can you pull that all the way around it? You're going to get it kind of snug. There you go. It's just a Velcro thing. You got it. That's good. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get an oxygen level, and this will give us a heart rate as well. Can you put this on one of his fingers on his right hand over there? Okay. How about your index finger? Yeah, you got it. Okay. So, and then all of this is up on a monitor. We can press a button and get a blood pressure, and it's actually going to work right now. It's going to pump up right here. And we're going to get an oxygen level and a heart rate. We have a temperature, and then we also get a respiratory rate, which is the number of times that he breathes per minute. Here are the vital signs up on the screen. We already had a presumably a normal temperature. We've got a blood pressure of 112 over 67, which is normal. The oxygen level is 99%, which is perfect. It's very good. Heart rate is 83 heartbeats per minute, and he's breathing about 18 breaths per minute. Thanks, Doug, for getting the vital signs. Sure. That's really helpful. Jordan, it looks like you're doing okay so far. After I get the vital signs, I do a full physical exam of the patient. You've probably had one of those before from your doctor. We use tools like our stethoscope. If needed to get more information, I order some laboratory studies and a chest x-ray of the patient. Doug? So the lab work, we use a small needle. Nobody likes this part, but it's pretty important. Um, and so we would find a vein and draw some blood and put the blood in these tubes and send them off to the laboratory. 
One of the tests that we use to figure out how sick or not sick somebody is, is a chest x-ray. And when I need a chest x-ray, I ask my friend Tori to come help us. All right, guys. Does anyone want to volunteer to be my patient? Excellent. Evelyn, come on up here. You're going to sit your bottom right up here. You're going to lean on back. Start it all the way back here. Good. Now, I'm going to sit you up nice and tall because we want to make sure you guys are nice and upright for your chest x-ray. Then you want to help me come on over here, Hazel, and help me place the plate. Go ahead and pick that up. Okay, good. So you're going to put the blue part behind Evelyn's back. Great. And then we're going to have you lean back. Perfect. And then we're going to go now to the foot of the bed here. And we're just going to make sure that her shoulders are nice and relaxed and your chin is raised a little bit, okay? All right. So now we're also going to give her, this is called a lead shield. So go ahead and just place that right on her lap, right here. Perfect. All right, and then, then we bring in our machine to get the pic rest of the picture set. Ready? Hello, my name's Yesenia. I'm gonna be doing Evelyn's chest x-ray today. Hazel's gonna be here helping me out to position the x-ray to do the um, chest x-ray. So go ahead and Hazel. And while she's doing that, this is our x-ray machine. This is where the x-rays come out. And then right over there on Evelyn's behind the plate, that's where the x-rays are going to transmit to the image on our portable machine. So okay, can you just help me? All right, so Hazel, come over here. So you're going to go grab, grab this. And you're going to tell Evelyn to take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in. And then she's going to go ahead and hold it and go ahead and expose. So this is just the picture we just took. Dr. Villajos, would you like to look at it? Yes, thanks, Yesenia. So this is an x-ray of somebody's chest, which again, helps me know how sick they might be from COVID-19. You can see on this picture, that shape here is Evelyn's heart. All this dark area here is her lungs. And in here is where we can see, does the patient have a really bad pneumonia or not? Evelyn, your chest x-ray looks really good. When patients with COVID-19 get very sick with pneumonia, one of the treatments that they need most is oxygen. And here in the emergency department, we have a few different ways that we can give a patient extra oxygen while their body gets better. Ella, can you please help me put on this nasal cannula? Okay. So this is one of the first things we try. And you can see this tubing here with two little prongs that goes into the patient's nose and shoots oxygen right into the patient's airways. Thank you, Ella. Now, sometimes that is not enough oxygen, so we use something else. Jordan, can you please come help me put on this non-rebreather mask? Okay. Okay, so Jordan is gonna slip this right over the patient's face. Very good, and let's put it over the patient's nose. And this mask allows us to give even higher levels of oxygen. Unfortunately, for our sickest patients, even this is not enough. Thank you, Jordan. Evelyn, can you come up? When patients need even more oxygen, we use something called a video laryngoscope. It looks like this, and on the end is a camera that helps us see where we're going. We use this to put a breathing tube all the way into the patient's windpipe or trachea to deliver the most amount of help we can give a patient and put them on a breathing machine called a ventilator. Evelyn, can you try to put that in for us? Just like that. There you go. Very good. Thank you, Evelyn. Hazel, do you want to also try? Sure. Come on up. You're going to hold it with your left hand and come around all the way to the head of the bed and tip it way down to begin with and just gently put it in the patient's mouth. Really good. Thank you, Hazel. Kids, I wanna show you what it looks like on the video screen I see when I'm using the video laryngoscope. So here's the patient and this is what we would have seen. So we go slowly into the patient's mouth and that's the patient's uvula that hangy thing in the back of your mouth that you may have seen. This is called the epiglottis, and that's right above the trachea. 
your windpipe. So when food or water goes down the wrong pipe, that's where it went. That white part is called your vocal cords. And just below that is the windpipe that goes into your lungs. So I'm gonna use this breathing tube and the video, and you can actually see the breathing tube now going into the patient's windpipe. Once it's in position, we can put this breathing tube and connect it to a ventilator that helps the patient breathe. There are many treatments for the COVID virus and its effects on the body, but unfortunately no medicine has been invented yet that can completely cure it. But sometimes for the sickest patients, we use up to six to seven different medications to help prevent or repair the damage that the virus does. Even more important than the treatments we have for COVID-19 is preventing it in the first place. And there are a lot of things I know you guys have all been doing to keep yourselves and your families safe. What do you guys do? Wash your hands frequently. Wear a mask everywhere you go. Wear a mask when you are around anyone outside your own family. Stay six feet away from other people whenever possible. Avoid crowded areas. If you have any COVID symptoms such as fever, cough, shortness of breath, stay away from all others, including your family members. Wear a mask if you are around them. Contact your doctor to get tested or go to the emergency department if you feel very sick. These simple things work really well to prevent the spread of the virus. If we do them regularly, the number of cases will go way down and we will all be able to get back to normal as soon as possible. There's one more important tool to fight the virus that I'd like to talk to you about right now. Vaccines! So the vaccine comes in vials just like this. Getting the vaccine can't make you sick because it doesn't contain any of the living virus. When the vaccine goes inside of your body, it tells the cells to make a very small but important part of the virus using special directions called messenger RNA. When your immune system sees the small part of the virus, it learns to build the perfect army to fight it. If you're exposed to the virus after having the vaccine, your body recognizes the intruder right away and gets rid of it without you getting sick. Most people getting the vaccine don't feel a thing. And when I got mine, all I had was a sore arm a few hours later. Now I feel much more protected at work, at home with my family, and much less worried about getting COVID. I hope you get yours when your turn comes. After you get your vaccines, will you ever need a booster shot? That's a great question. We're not sure yet, but we suspect, especially with the arrival of some variations on the COVID virus, that at some point in the future, we may need a booster shot. We can wait to hear from our doctors and public health officials as to when or if we need to get them. Do all the different COVID vaccines have the same amount of immunity? All the COVID vaccines that have been licensed for use in the United States work very, very well. Some do provide a little bit more immunity than others, but all of them prevent us from getting very sick all of the time. Do you think that they will ever be able to hand out vaccines to kids? When vaccines for COVID-19 were first developed, they tested it on, on grown-ups first to make sure that they were safe. Testing is underway right now to make sure that they're safe for kids, and we're pretty confident that they will be. When will kids like me get the vaccine? We're hoping by the fall or winter of 2021, the COVID vaccines will have been tested and shown to be safe in kids. Will people have to get the vaccine yearly, like the flu shot? We don't know yet how often we'll have to repeat the COVID-19 vaccine or get a booster shot. But if I had to guess, you'll be getting another shot in the future. What if I get my first vaccine shot and can't get my second because they ran out or I forgot? We think getting even one shot of the COVID-19 vaccine offers a lot of protection and you can still get the full amount of protection even if there's a delay between getting your first shot and your second shot. 
I'm also really optimistic that that's not going to happen too much anymore because the vaccine makers are learning how to make more and more faster and faster every day. Has anyone gotten hurt or died because of the vaccine? No one has died from getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Some people do get reactions after getting the shot and very commonly you get a sore arm or may feel like you have a little bit of a flu for a day or two after getting it. Very rarely people get a strong allergic reaction called anaphylaxis, but we always make sure the shots are given with medical professionals standing by to give treatment in case you get an allergic reaction. After I get my vaccine, how long will I still have to wear a mask? That's a great and really important question. Even after getting your vaccine, you need to continue to wear your mask to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. While getting a vaccine keeps you safe from getting sick from COVID, we still don't know if it doesn't spread to other people, even though you don't get sick. As to how long you'll need to do that, I can't say for sure, but we'll need cases to go down to at least the level of the flu virus. That could be by next fall or winter, or it could be later into 2022. still wear a mask to keep yourself and others safe. 